Hi everyone, this is OCD Live. I'm Ali Grayman. We're going to be answering some questions about OCD. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. If you have a question that you would like me to answer on the next show, please leave it below any of the videos and let's get started. So the first question the person is asking how to deal with having thoughts that this would have happened if I didn't say this, then it didn't happen. So basically, um, anytime you're getting into these thoughts about OCD, really doesn't matter what they are. It's you're already feeding it. You're already reacting with fear by trying to solve it. Because think about it, anytime you're trying to solve an OCD thought, are you doing it from a position of, this is OCD, I don't care. No, you're doing it from a position of, oh my God, I have to figure this out, otherwise my whole world is going to fall apart. And your brain gets that message loud and clear and it says, okay, you're in danger with this thought. Why you are in danger, the brain doesn't know. That part of the brain, the amygdala has no idea, but it sees that you are reacting with fear. That means that there is danger, and that means it's going to send you more thoughts in the future in order to get you to react. Because it wants you to react to dangerous situations. Because that part of the brain, the amygdala, it's not set up to um, tell the difference be between a situation that is real versus a situation that is OCD. It's viewing every situation you react to as with fear as real. So if you're reacting with fear, that means it's real. That means it's going to give you more thoughts. Doesn't matter what it is. It could be the silliest thing. But if you're reacting, it's going to give you more of that. So that's what I'm saying. It's very, very important to control the reaction. So whenever you're having thoughts about OCD situation and trying to kind of dive into it and figure it out or make sense of it, it's, it's always for a bad reason. You know, it, it's never just uh, for information or um, to get uh, perspective on it. It's, it really is reassurance. You know, and it does get you in deeper. So you really want to make sure you avoid this kind of thinking entirely. Not dissecting the situation, because you're asking me kind of for reassurance as well a little bit, right? Um, not dissecting and diving in why this and why that, but saying generally the fact that I'm even thinking about this situation is bad and it is already OCD, so I'm not going to react to it. And I'm not going to try to find, you know, the answer to this part or to this part or to this part because the whole thing doesn't make sense. The next question was about changing OCD themes and uh, how to do ERP when your themes are constantly changing. Basically, you know that when, uh, when it comes down to the bottom of it, what is the root? So for example, you may have um, harm OCD you may also have as a subtype uh, cleaning OCD, you may also have false memory OCD, but if you dive into those other types of OCD, usually most types of OCD come down to harm. What if I'm somehow gonna do harm to other people or to myself, or in case of a religious OCD, what if I uh, do something bad against God? So there's that as well, right? So, um, but it's, what is the root? Don't worry about the thought itself. What is the root of the thought? And then anything that has to do with that root, you're ignoring. So, um, for example, if you have harm OCD, you might have driving OCD, you might have uh, um, OCD around knives and things like that, but it all comes down to the same thing. So anything in this area, you have to ignore and do it at the same time. Now, in terms of exposure and response, if your OCD is uh, mostly a pure O type, which is pure obsessional, meaning there's no physical compulsions, especially with like false memory stuff. What if I did something wrong in the past, right? Or, or the future part of it, right? It's what if I'm gonna do something wrong in the future? That's a pure O type of OCD because there's no way uh, to really um, do compulsions for it. So the person just spends a lot of time thinking about it. So if you look at the person, you won't be able to really tell that they have OCD. Um, they're not doing any kind of physical compulsions, but in their mind, they're always going, that's a pure O. I'm doing a little bit background as I'm explaining this to people who are new to the channel. So um, they uh, understand what I'm talking about because in my other shows, I feel like I'm going too much forward and people are asking me questions because they're kind of, they didn't listen to previous shows, so they're not understanding what I'm talking about. So when you have pure O, 
the way you um, do ERP is the thought itself is the exposure. And so ERP, by the way, it's exposure and response prevention, right? So exposure itself is the thought. And the response prevention is preventing the response of fear to that thought. So in practice, um, let's take a false memory thought. Uh, what if uh, I killed somebody in the past? That's the exposure thought coming in, right? So you woke up, you got this thought. Maybe you got it with a vivid image. Maybe you got it with a feeling of extreme. Well, of course, you got it with a feeling of extreme fear, but also extreme guilt and all of this other stuff that goes along with OCD, right? So that's the thought. Now, what are you going to do for the response? Are you going to try to figure it out, stay and think about it? Um, or are you going to say, nope, not dealing with this anymore. This is OCD. Yes, it can stay there because it is in your mind right now, right? Like you can't really magically kind of make it go away in an instant, right? So it is there, fine, but I'm not actively going to engage it. So it has that room in my mind. That's okay. I'm not dealing with it. So, and that way, what you're doing is you're responding without fear. You're saying, I'm not scared of it. It's okay if it stays because I'm not scared of it. So it doesn't matter if it stays rather than, you know, panicking, trying to figure it out, giving it energy by figuring it out, giving it energy by um, trying to make it go away, trying to um, do everything in your power to avoid having the thought and all of this kind of stuff, right? Instead, being very calm, very kind of zen about it and saying, yeah, whatever, who cares? You know, and it's a difficult process. You, you have to kind of get the hang of it. it. It takes a little bit of time to understand how to actually do this. And the only way to do it is to practice. So the, I'm telling you guys, the OCD recovery lies entirely in exposure and response prevention. Like there's also the diet aspect. There is also the meditation, relaxation, stress, and all of that um, aspect. But I would say major part of it is, uh, is the ERP. Because if you do all that other stuff, like the vitamins, the, 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 the right? It's none of it is going to make a difference without the ERP. But if you say, don't do any of the other stuff and just do ERP, you will recover. It will be a lot harder because all that other stuff helps. But ERP is where it's, you know, the, the, that's kind of the nucleus of the whole thing. And another thing I kind of wanted to go over again is the um, acceptance of the thoughts. Because a lot of the people ask me, well, um, in OCD books, they always say you should accept the thoughts. But how can I accept the thoughts if they're so terrible? What they mean by accepting the thoughts is not accepting that these thoughts are okay, but instead accepting that these thoughts are part of OCD. You know, just like you're saying... Um, say for example, you have a cold, right? You're sick, you have a cold and, um, it's not okay to always be coughing, right? It doesn't feel good to always be coughing. It's not a good thing, but right now you have a cold, so you're going to cough right now. You have OCD, so you're going to have these thoughts. Does that mean anything in terms of the, you know, overall scope? No. Does that mean anything about you that you're having these thoughts? No. Once your OCD goes away, these thoughts will entirely go away and they will make no difference to you whatsoever. But in order for that to happen, you need to do exposure and response. So no matter what, every single day, wake up in the morning, you get a thought, you're ignoring it. Two minutes later, you get another thought, you're ignoring it again. Two minutes later, again, and like this all day, it's, it's hard work. And it's not going to be always, this is another thing that I always want to stress in the shows, that it's not always going to be perfect. You know, it's, um, some days, sometimes, some days you will kind of give into it and start to do reassurance and all of that. It will happen. You're not a robot and it's impossible uh, for it to be 100% smooth recovery. It's an up and down thing, but it's more up than down. So you're going further every time, but, you know, there's going to be setbacks every once in a while. So you have to kind of accept and embrace the setbacks as well, because it's it's just going to happen. And if you put more pressure on yourself to be perfect, then you're adding to the problem, you know. And I see a lot of the times uh, people get obsessed about OCD recovery specifically as well, you know. 
So am I doing this correctly? Is this the right thing to do? You know, this is a very, very, very common type of OCD, you know, because there's so much information out there that's conflicting that um, it's, it's hard to figure out uh, kind of what, and especially if you're reading about it online, right? From an article, it's hard to figure out what the person means. And uh, that's why I'm bringing these things up because like, the, for example, the question about accepting the thoughts, that's a question I get all the time. It's very, very common and I want to address it here so um, you guys understand what they mean when they say accepting the thoughts. They're basically, what they're saying is giving it room in your mind, but not engaging it, not making, um, what does that mean about me? You know, because if you look at it uh, from always, you know, if you're not sure what to do in a specific situation, say you're in the moment and you're not sure how to react, the best way to tell is to um, take a person who is in your life, uh, a close family member or a friend, and think, because yeah, you know them very well, um, think what would they do if they were in your position right now, if they had this thought, you know? Say, for example... Um, they're, I don't know, driving and they think, oh my God, what if I uh, just swerve the car and kill everybody in the car? What would they do if they had that thought? They would probably shrug their shoulders, say, eh, whatever, and move on, right? They wouldn't give it importance. And this is the thing, like I was saying in my uh, show last week, that they did a study where they asked people, do you have these thoughts? And they asked people who have OCD and they asked people who don't have OCD. And the answers were identical. So everybody gets the same thoughts. It's the reaction that's different. You know, the only um, the only difference I would think is uh, with the false memory stuff because false memory is a very um, I find that it's a very high level of OCD um, anxiety. I mean, OCD is, is is generally a very high level of anxiety, right? But uh, um, when you're starting to think that what if you actually have done something in the past, that's your anxiety is basically so high that you are starting to uh, really lose touch with what actually happened because of the anxiety being so high. You know, and people who don't have the anxiety that high, people who don't have OCD, um, they won't go that far. But something in the moment, they'll, like they, they can still kind of worry about it. So say, for example, uh, a common false memory that could really happen to people without OCD is what if, uh, oh, I walk, say you're walking by somebody, right? Say you're walking by people in the mall, uh, in shopping, right? And you think, uh, what if I touch somebody walking by them? Or uh, you driving, you're driving and you hit a bump and you think, oh my God, what if I hit a you know, person or somebody or an, an animal or something, something live, right? Very, very common for people who have OCD but for people who don't have OCD. But people who don't have OCD, they'll just maybe look back and say, ah, whatever, no, probably didn't happen, and forget about it next second, while people with OCD will think about it for a long time afterwards. And uh, the more they think about it and the more they panic, the more they start to come up with little details. Oh, I remember there was uh, something, something, something. That means it happened. Let me try to figure out more. And they start to get deeper, deeper, deeper into it. And it's, it gets more difficult the more they panic, right? So, and that doesn't happen to a person who doesn't have OCD because they cut it off right in the beginning. So as soon as they get the thought, they cut it off and they move on. So that's the difference. So always doing the exposure and response for all of your themes, you know? And uh, another thing I kind of wanted to mention too is if you have a primary theme of, say, harm, and then you have secondary theme of, say, um, I don't know, cleaning or checking or something like that. Usually those themes I see as secondary themes. Sometimes I see them as primary, but most of the times I see them as secondary. And if you're having those themes as well, you need to address those because if you're addressing the main one and if you're ignoring your main theme, those secondary ones can become primary real quick if you're not paying attention to them. So you want to make sure um, um, you're addressing those as well. Another common question I also wanted to bring up before we get to more questions is, um, I get asked a lot, is avoidance, uh, avoidance is kind of like reassurance. Because again, let, let, let's start from the beginning, that when you're avoiding things, right, 
you're avoiding uh, because you don't want to get an OCD thought. You don't want to get into another OCD situation. So you're reassuring or ensuring your safety. If you are doing reassurance, this is after the situation. So say if you have driving OCD, right, you can go two ways about reassurance. No, I'm not going to drive, so I'm not going to get the thoughts. That's avoidance, but again, kind of like reassurance. And then reassurance is if you drive and you think something happened, then trying to figure it out afterwards. They're both the same thing because they're sending the same message of fear to your brain about the situation. So it doesn't really matter. Now, um, a question I get asked often, and uh, it, it, it also has conflicting information, so I wanted to address it as well in case you guys are um, wondering about this. In uh, OCD books, generally it says that refocusing on, say you have an OCD thought and uh, you would like to refocus on something else in order, like how I say, in order for um, to switch your attention. Now, but refocusing is kind of like avoidance and it's kind of like running away from OCD, you know, and that's where the conflicting information comes in. Is refocusing bad or is it not that? And um, the thing with refocusing is you're either thinking about something or you're not. So if you are um, having an OCD thought, in order for you to not give it energy, you have to be thinking of something else, right? Because that's what we're trying to prevent. We're trying to prevent the response of you thinking about the situation. So if you're not thinking about the situation, you're thinking about something else. If you're thinking about something else, it's kind of like an avoidance. But it's not an avoidance in a bad way because um, this is something that a person without OCD would do also. So you're following standard pattern of behavior, right? Um, and in that way, it, it's, it's a good thing. Because in books, usually they say, well, no, you just have to sit with the thought. Well, you know, maybe in theory that would be good because in theory that's right. You should be sit sitting with the thought and doing nothing about the thought. But in reality of the situation, how are you going to do that when your anxiety was 10 out of 10? So you have the thought, but you don't react to it and your anxiety is 10 out of 10. It's pretty much impossible. You know, but if you refocus and you say, okay, that thought can stay in my mind, I'm going to um, do, you know, whatever I had planned for the day. And then maybe at some point I'll get back to it, you know. If your anxiety is high, you can say that to yourself that, you know, I'm going to delay the reassurance, I'll come back to it if I feel I need to in a few hours. And then when those few hours come up, then you delay it some more, you know, so that way you're always, always, always delaying the thought. Because what, what happens is when you're delaying, you're saying to your mind, okay, this is not that important to me. I can put it off kind of on the back burner. And that makes you in a position of power. That's not a fear-driven response. If you're saying that can wait, that's not a fear-driven response. And that's exactly what you want to show to your mind, that you're not scared anymore. You're not scared anymore? You're not going to get those thoughts anymore. And another thing too, that I know that a lot of this is repeat for you guys, but it's first of all, it's good to have it in your mind again. Um, and then for new people, it's just extremely important for me to mention is if, say, for example, you had an OCD thought for years or for a year or even a few months and you start to do ERP and you are refusing the thoughts, not, not actively refusing in the way of uh, giving it energy, but you know, not ignoring it, not paying attention, basically doing ERP properly. And you do it for a week and you think that you're not getting better. The reason why you feel like you're not getting much better is because the proportion of the time that you spent telling your brain that this thought is important to the proportion that you spent saying that it's not important now is very um, heavy towards the it is important because you spent a long time saying that. So you got to give it more time. Don't get discouraged if, you know, after a few times you, you, you don't see much of a progression. You need to get those repetitions in. And in that way, um, it helps to embrace the um, new obsessions as they're coming into your mind to say, okay, you know what? It feels really bad, but it's just another opportunity for me to practice exposure and response. And you need to practice it in order to recover. So it is kind of, 
it's not a good thing, but it is good in terms of recovery and getting out of this uh, situation. So let's move on to the next question. Uh, even though I thought I'm okay with not doing the compulsions again, but my mind automatically tries to seek reassurance about my OCD thoughts. I know reassurance is bad, but how do I stop it from coming to my mind, even though I don't want self-reassurance? Please help. So, okay, there's two types of fears going on here, okay? Um, not with just this uh, person, but uh, with any type of OCD, okay? There's the fear that's coming in already on autopilot so in the uh, example um you're driving and you think oh my god i think i hit somebody you know that's already coming in on autopilot for you so there's nothing you can do to control that now the response is oh, i think i did hit somebody let me go check so you're taking that anxiety that's automatically coming in and that fear that's automatically coming in and multiplying it by your reaction okay so now in terms of reassurance, when you're multiplying the reaction, part of the reaction is going to be reassurance because the person will say, oh my God, I think I hit somebody. Yeah, I think I did hit somebody. Let me try to figure it out, right? So that's automatic reassurance. And um, it's, it is difficult to prevent it in the moment because it, all of this happens so fast. So for that, as soon as you realize this is what you're doing, this is when you have to uh, get yourself together as much as you possibly can in the moment and stop doing it as much as you possibly can in the moment. Like I said, if you can't stop doing it, at least delay it. Okay, so, okay, I'm going to do self-reassurance in a few hours. But the stuff that comes in automatically, right now, this is just, it's almost like a habit, you know, where you're so used to reacting with reassurance, it automatically happens. It's fine. It will go away on its own. Whenever you become conscious of what you are doing, that's when you need to say, okay, I'm not doing it. I'm not reacting. So the next question I have is, hi, I saw an article about different kinds of OCD, of harm OCD, and this following one describes my kind of OCD. Could you talk a little bit more about it? So, okay, so I'm reading the article now. It's uh, fear of harmful identity. In this form of harm OCD, a person may worry excessively about being a secret sociopath and monitor all of uh, their behaviors and thoughts to feel certain that, that it could not be one. This might include ritualized avoidance of any media that describes violent acts and compulsively comparing and analyzing the similarities and difference between the person and the serial killer. This might take the form of mentally reviewing a benign action, such as saying hello to a co-worker and asking, am I certain I greeted this person to, or like polite, or could I have done it to trick them into thinking I'm normal when I'm really manipulating them the way a sociopath would? So with this question, um, what they're describing is pretty much typical harm OCD. Um, the, the specific type is more dealing with what if I'm a sociopath rather than what if I have already done something, which would be like more like a false memory OCD related to harm OCD. So it's just different types of harm OCD. There's, you know, some people will get one, some people will get another. The big problem here is your reaction. You're trying to figure it out. What does this mean? Why? What is this type of OCD? And researching it. And the more research you get on it, the more confusing it is. You already know, right? Just by listening to this channel, knowing you know some other stuff about like what the stuff you've already read. This is enough information for you to recover. You don't need more. You know, don't get it because it's just going to get you more confused. Don't try to figure it out. You have harm OCD. In order to recover, you need to avoid um, everything that has to do with reacting with fear. So in every single way, you need to avoid reacting with fear to these thoughts. Oh, uh, maybe like this article says, um, you know, the person in the article is worried about what if I'm a secret sociopath. Okay, I'm not going to react to that thought. Um, if you're doing the rituals to um, see, to compare and all of this, not going to do it anymore. So you're giving it zero, zero energy. And guys, generally, you know, don't try to find your exact specific type of OCD. Everybody's different and every harm OCD for every person is slightly different. It's okay if you don't have all of the symptoms of harm OCD. It doesn't mean anything. You still have harm OCD. You still need to do the work.
you know, don't don't dig into it. So the next question, um, the person says, I've had a recent uh, re-spike, my version of harm OCD, and my anxiety is back up and my techniques don't seem to be helping. Any tips? So um, the spike happened, but it's your reaction that's keeping it going, okay? So the original spike of uh, what if, you know, blah, 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 right? That happened, that's fine, you know, the, the having the thought, but that was the exposure, right? The thought was the exposure. Now, what are you doing to, uh, what, what's your response? If you're responding with a lot of fear and trying to analyze and trying to figure it out, you're making yourself worse. So trying your best to pull out of it because the more, um, the more you try to solve it, the more you try to figure it out, the, the more deeper you're going to fall back into it. So next question I have is, hi Ali, can OCD make you believe you felt certain way in the past? Can OCD take your current obsession and associate it with fragments of memories in the past? Yes. Um, so it can take a memory or a situation from the past and twist it into an OCD situation, such as, uh, well, I remember driving and hitting something in the past. It must be a person that I hit. Or I remember just if, you, if you're talking about strictly about feelings, um, yeah, you, you can have that the false memory that's just related to feelings. So I felt this way or I felt that way. You know, that can also happen as well. So it's the fear, right? If the fear is present and you're not sure and you're doubting and you're going over and over and over it again in your mind, then that's OCD and you need to stop doing that because the more you do, the, the deeper in you get. And even if by chance you happen to solve whatever situation you are worried about, all that's going to happen is your mind will start scanning for a different but similar situation or a different detail within this situation and you're going to be stuck in a, in a few hours again or in a few days, you know, again. Because now your mind has learned that this situation is scary to you and it's going to send you something similar. So anything similar that it sends you, again, disregard. You know, it's, um, you have to retrain how your mind views anything to do with your current theme. Right now, if you have this, whatever theme you have, right? I'm not just talking about this question, but generally, right? Um, whatever theme you have, if uh, you see a movie that has something to do with it, if you have uh, a dream that has something to do with it, if somebody says something that has something to do with it, you're going to get triggered because your mind associating this particular situation with fear. And to break that connection, you need to over and over show to your mind that this doesn't really matter. And if you're trying um, and you feel like it's just not working, it's you have to re-examine where you're doing reassurance. Because I guarantee you, if you're not doing good in terms of recovery, it means you're doing reassurance or avoidance or rituals, which is all, again, it's, it's all the same thing, you know? So where are you making that mistake and then correcting that mistake? So this is the end of the show for today. I got to as many questions as possible. If I didn't address yours, please ask me again and I'll address it on the next show. Um, if you have any questions, you can always visit youhaveocd.com. There's a private recovery program there with me. There's ebooks, there's articles, lots of information to help you recover. Please check that out. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.